Hello there, greetings, precious people of God. This is Jonathan again, and I'm so excited to come to you on this platform again. Um, uh, those of you who have followed this particular series, it's um, a prophecy on Nigeria's next president as regards the 2023 election. And um, we have just, out of the inspiration given to us by God, put this together to inform and to enlighten everyone out there, particularly Nigerians, to know God's preferred candidate for the 2023 elections. I believe, as it is said in God's word, that God is the one who exalts men and deposes another in Psalm 75. So it's important that we know that God is interested in the next elections. And as a matter of fact, he already has everything planned out. And it is time for us to know his candidates and uh, look at the signs by which we can identify this individual uh, so that we can consolidate on our political franchise. I believe that 2023 elections is going to be um, a decision-making event for the democratic destiny of Nigeria. And um, it is very important that we get it right uh, if we must have a future and progress to the place where God wants us to be. Now, I've been sharing on 12 signs to know God's preferred presidential candidate for Nigeria's next election. And um, I want to just continue from where we have been. The Bible tells us in Psalms 89, verse 20, that he has found his servant David and anointed him with his holy oil. So he found his servant, he found him as a servant, and he has anointed him, he has chosen him to be king. And that was a scripture God gave me uh, that kick started this work. That means that we are looking not just for any other leader this time around. We are looking for a David. We are looking for one that God has raised, just the way he raised David um, in the Bible days, to shepherd and to lead his people, like he said in Psalm 72. So um, I want to just give you some more of the signs. Some of these signs um, will, will, will manifest before the elections and some of these signs will also manifest when this individual comes into power. And the reason for this is so that we can have guidance, we can have a blueprint that will guide us as a people so that we can pray and I trust that God's will will be done. Um, so I'll go on with the signs right away. Sign number five is that this individual, or sign number six rather, this individual will be fluent and eloquent with words. He will be fluent and eloquent with words, capable of convincing even the most stony-hearted. Now, if we use David as uh, a figure to be able to detect uh, the next president of our nation, uh, it will be good that we understand his character from the Bible. David, in, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 18, when his criteria was mentioned before King Saul, when King Saul needed a harpist to play for him, um, you know, so that the evil spirit troubling him would leave. One of the things that was said about him was that he speaks well. The New International Version says it that way. He speaks well. He's a prudent speaker. And, you know, when you look at um, African nations, for a long time, even after the independence of most African nations, um, we've been looked at at the Western world, by the Western world, as um, a continent that is uneducated or having leaders that are not charismatic or intelligent enough uh, to stand at global stage. Now, all that is changing in the 21st century because uh, there's, uh, technology has made education so available uh, for the minds to, of men to be transformed. Uh, so this leader will not just be like other leaders who come and make empty promises. 
you will find a lot of intelligence in his words. He will be able to present to you facts, present to you the problems that we face and um, how these problems can be tackled in a way that can convince people. That was one of the ways David was able to convince his generation. He was a prudent speaker. He could speak well. He was so inspired by God that he could um, captivate his audience. So I want you to watch out for, among all the candidates, there's going to be this one person who is very eloquent in words. This is not about telling lies to try to get or to sell a political franchise. This is about being real and being able to captivate the people that you are speaking to in ways that you can convince them and give them hope. So that's one sign. He will be a very fluent speaker. Another sign will be that he will, by the wisdom of God, bring an end or that he will bring the beginning of the end to God Fadarism in Nigeria. Now those of you who understand a little bit of politics, you know that um, well, God Fadarism was coined out of, you know, maybe retired politicians or people who have had uh, major influences on political circles or positions of leadership uh, in power. And uh, because of that, um, a lot of secret meetings will go on. Um, people will have to dance to their tune to ensure that they get a position or get to be part of the government. And um, that has ruled our political scene for a long time. Now, if we must progress as a people, the past is important. The past speaks of history. Uh, uh, the future speaks of mystery and the presence is reality. But if you must progress in life, in as much as history is important to know where you are coming from, you cannot keep holding on to the past if you want to go to the future. So we need to bring, we need someone that will bring a balance in the system, someone that will reduce the control of God Fadarism, and people who want to just stay and control the government from a place. Now, make no mistakes. God knows that if someone comes boldly to the scene to try to attack this, they will not so much as allow him get on the throne, get on the seat. So we are looking at someone who will come. He will be like a decoy, or his, his image will be like a decoy um, with a very soft uh, um, and tender appearance. But make no mistakes. He will be one that will uphold justice and truth and verity. So he's going to bring an end to God Fadarism. That's one of the signs. Another sign will be that he will bring the long-awaited balance to our system of government. Now, it is known that there are three tiers of government, or three arms of government. There is the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. In, in, a, in a healthy democracy, or a healthy democratic system, there is a balance of power within this tree. This is what I call shared leadership. So the legislative uh, make the laws because they represent the, 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 the average Nigerian from the grassroots. Uh, they make the laws, they fabricate the constitution. The judiciary um, upholds the laws that are made and then the executive are uh, saddled with executing the laws that is made. So not one of these arm must usurp power for themselves. And sadly, we are facing a lot of that in Africa today. Either you find the executive trying to just, you know, man the whole system, or you find the judiciary, you find a lot of contradictory judgments and then a lot of chaos in the legisl legislature. But this man, is going to bring a balance. That means he's someone that will have an understanding of government, have an understanding of rule of law. Now, you can, it's safe to, to know that he will, in a way, come from or have a background that is, you know, backed up by the judiciary system. I leave that for you to guess. He's going to bring a consolidation of power balance to this tree. You will see it by his policies. You will see it by the reforms he will make 
and the things that he would constitute. And when that balance comes into our system, then the beginning of a new era, a new democratic era has come. So that's one of the signs. Another sign would be that he will uphold the rule of law. He will uphold the rule of law. There was something about King David. King David was a man who had respect for the laws of God. When you read Psalms 119, it was written by King David. Everything about that chapter is about the laws of God, the commandments of God, and several other chapters in the Psalms. Now, in Israel, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, God spoke to Moses and um, gave an instruction that every king that ruled Israel will have to read and copy down the laws of God governing Israel. He will copy them down in a book and hold that book as his own copy. And of course, as you write down something you are reading, that is so that the king can have the laws close to his heart, memorize them, and be guided by the laws when he sits on the throne of Israel. So David was a king that loved the laws of God. David was a king that upheld the justice system of God's law. Almost every judgment he made was based on God's law. We need a leader like David that will uphold the rule of law. That when the law says this, we stick to it. If this is what the book says, we stick to it. Not going around to fabricate other things that can uh, bring a dispassion or disparagement um, in our system. We need leaders that can respect. No one is above the law. We need people who themselves are bounded by the law. That's one more sign you will know. I'll give you one more, and I think we are done for today. He will also be a leader that will give power to the people and even grant autonomy to the local government system. Now, let me talk about that a little. There are three tiers of government, the, the federal government, the state government, the local government. Without criticizing, quote and unquote, you can look at society, look at our Nigerian system, and realize that um, there is no balance in uh, the tiers of government. All of the projects are mostly left for the federal government. The state government are autonomous in themselves. And um, for a while, there has been a battle to give autonomy to the local government. Now, the reason why it is important to give autonomy to um, a local government setting is because development can be narrowed down to the grassroots. You see, the law in itself is not corrupt. The system in itself may not be corrupt, but the individuals in the system are the ones that may be corrupt or that may be godly. So we need to, if we must see development to the grassroots, these are the people who vote us into power. We must be able to give them autonomy. Now, this is a leader that will come and by policies and political reforms give autonomy to the local government. You will see it in his uh, uh, disposition. You will see it in the laws and the reforms that will be made. That way there will be a consolidation of our democracy. Development will go down to the grassroots. The people can interact and have a feel with the benefits of that particular government or administration. And I believe that will bring um, that will reduce violence and, 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 and killings and kidnappings and crime that we find on our streets in our rural environment. That will be reduced because you have brought power to the people and that's what democracy is, giving power. You are not afraid, you are not intimidated by empowering the people. Every true leader is one who empowers the people, not one who usurps power for himself, like King Saul was. David was a man who empowered the people. You could see a balance in his system, in the army, in, his, in, in the economy, in the people working in his palace. Everyone was empowered to do one thing or the other, and there was smoothness in his government. So thank you, friends. Uh, we are still going to do more videos for us to know these signs and to beware. Like I've always said, we are not paid to do this. We are not supporting any party. We are not supporting any candidate.
this is the word of the Lord that must come to his people. He says he will do nothing except he reveals it to his servant, the prophet. And he has chosen to reveal these things to babes. I want us to pray. This is not a time to be quiet. This is a time for us to take these signs, create a roadmap, understand the image of who God is sending, and pray that these things be fulfilled because there will be contentions. But the gate of hell will not prevail against God's people. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. God bless you. Hello, precious people. Thank you for tuning in. Please, I would want you to make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or like and share on any of the platforms. It is important that this message goes out. You are going to contribute a lot in spreading this message, okay? So please subscribe on the channel, um, like and share to every group, to everyone that you are connected to. Thank you very much.